Hello. Today I'd like to talk about my computer workspace um, because it is a little bit unconventional. Um, I'll explain everything, I hope. Uh, but before we begin, so the current uh, way it is distributed has been so for about a month. Before that it was quite a normal setup with a laptop computer and an extra monitor that I had put on the wall. So I had two screens and then I don't know if you saw from one of the earlier videos I had a actually an um, 80s uh, TV those big uh, big TVs one of those uh, mounts out from the wall here and I had my uh, MacBook here for video editing. I did not like that setup it was clunky to work with the um, MacBook and yeah I only have old computers as well so the two screen setup was uh, I, al I always have too much open on one computer uh, so what I've thought uh, a long time I have searched for a software that I could share or or hardware but uh, share mouse and keyboard seamlessly not like those KVM switches where you have to actually press a switch to switch between computers um, but to seamlessly use the same keyboard and mouse on multiple computers and uh, about one or two months ago I found that software and that really changed the way I thought about working with computers finally I've been looking for that for so long so today I just uh, lacquered this table so it's really nice and clean it's it should take a week before it gets really set uh, so I'm not gonna leave any things on the uh, tabletop but that won't really be a problem as you'll see soon so uh, that's why everything is gone and I'm go going to put everything back now so what I've done is so it's one of my uh, old laptops and so it was like this here before oh also <laughs> this is from the this is stuck here in the installation and I just built around it as well as I could so I'm not using this faucet in any way so don't worry so anyway the computer was like this and another uh, monitor there uh, so and I wanted to have the uh, more free space on the table so when I was looking around I thought oh look it can tilt all the way to 180 degrees so actually it becomes really flat and I put it up like that and then with the external mouse and keyboard I could use that uh, without, without taking up any space and the other key, uh, monitor on the side but then with this software so the software is called Synergy Simless I'll put a link in the description not affiliated in any way I'm just saying it's a really cool and not that expensive uh, software so I had another old computer which I which can do the same thing not as much as that one but still the same and I put that one there and now I have two screens with two different CPUs so uh, an old computer like this doesn't cost much more than a new monitor I know there are pros and cons for with everything but what so I can't drag applications in between but the copy and paste functions and everything like that works so if I have a web page on this one that I want to show on this one I can just copy it move it to that one and have two things move, uh, doing completely different things 
and not taking um, CPU power from each other, which I find is very good. And then, thirdly, oops, I have my also very old MacBook, and it was like this. And Synergy Simless works on MacBooks and also on Raspberry Pis, Linux, everything. Um, they have a distro for most platforms. I think the Linux, or uh, not the Linux, the Raspberry Pi one is a bit tricky to uh, get to work. I know Adafruit has done a blog post about that. So here, with one mouse and keyboard I could use all of this. However, this one is still standing on the table. Yes, I'll get to that too. So, uh, this was all nice, uh, but I still felt that it was standing on the table and I didn't like that. So I had uh, a shelf. Where's my shelf? So I had this shelf uh, and uh, when I had the uh, laptop just standing and the extra monitor it was up here but in there and then I moved it actually down to so I could hang the computers like this and I pushed it into the wall um, what happens is you have a shelf you put things on the shelf and you put things in front of the uh, monitor so I scrapped that idea and instead I just got a much smaller rod, not really a shelf, they can't place very much on this. And I did these small brackets that I added to the sides and then I just hang the this bar on here. Uh, so let me show you that and this because of the faucet here this is, this is a bit tricky so I actually need to begin with this one before I do that I also want to, to show another thing uh, because I've had it like this for a couple of weeks and uh, as I said and now when I took off everything and lacquered this I looked a bit on this and one of the problems I've had is that when you hang it like this so here's the power button and you hang it like this and you need to lift it up and press the power button every time and actually it is the exact same thing here the power button is there and you hang it and the power button is uh, hidden. So what I did is I drilled a hole where the power button is and I put a screw in there and some glue, just hot glue on this side just to uh, so it won't scratch the the computer too much and also for getting the the uh, screw slash button to to stay in place because I also added a small spring here and this is a spring from a fountain pen or uh, some pen that has broken and I try to I have a small box where I save all springs that come from different projects so this is the spring that I just cut a few pieces from. So there are two buttons like this, one here and one here, one for each computer. That is so the computers, I won't have to lift the computers to turn them on and off.
so I hang them like this. Uh, and also when I hang two computers here, this sags a bit uh, because uh, yeah, it's not that sturdy. So I, in the beginning I just put a screw in there and it held it in place, but not very good. So then I made this little thing here. Uh, ignore this bar here for a moment which I then added to here to keep it more in place. So we're gonna put that in place. And now it is much more sturdy, of course. And the second one in like that and now I have two screens with two CPUs and the MacBook is still standing here uh, but uh, again I wanted to have this out of the way but not having to move it so that is why this one is here so that one keeps the MacBook in place and also I can add a fourth computer here if I want to. Cable management is... Uh, let's move the camera a bit. So there's a hole here that goes down to my, my uh, power distribution down there. And also I have a USB hub put on the wall down there to connect the, uh, the keyboard and mouse to this computer via a USB port on this side, which makes it which makes the ports on this side free for any other things I would like to connect. So let's connect the power. And this is the first time I try the power buttons in place, so I'm hoping they will work. That one worked, and that one worked. So, uh, a few. That's a bit loud. A few other cables here. So, I have two um, audio cables because I want audio from both of these uh, computers. I don't care about the MacBook because that's where I sit and do my, my video editing, and I just use the onboard speakers for that for now. I could probably do this with those as well. So what, what is uh, below here? So below here, uh, on the way to the, to the speakers, I have one of these. So just a simple summer force that puts these two into one cable that then goes to the, to the speakers. So I just add these. And this way I have sound coming from both of these computers. I also have one hard drive external that stands here. And that's my uh, videos hard drive because all the videos I do take up a lot of space, so I usually have this one plugged into the MacBook. And then we need the keyboard and mouse. 
So let's log in to all of these computers. So the Synergy software is just a, a server and then on the two other are slaves or, or clients. I'd like to talk really quickly about lighting as well uh, because so I have an LED strip here which are the same that I have on my electronics workbench and all of all of these three so here's one here one here which is actually connected to one down here and then there is one facing outward for when I do face to the camera videos except this one because it was it gets light into the camera in the completely wrong way. Anyway, so they are connect they are controlled with uh, three voltage regulators here. So, yeah, one there, and this one is that one, and then you have this one. So these are voltage regulators, and let me get one. Then the, uh, the reason I have these is uh, I watched a DIY Perks video where he did, I believe he did a massive LED panel uh, also for doing videos that was dimmable. And he, he modified uh, uh, another voltage regulator and added a potentiometer so this functionality was possible on that voltage regulator. Um, it was quite an expensive voltage regulator and it was quite complicated and, and, and unnecessary uh, modification because when I searched the uh, eBay, not the eBay, when I searched eBay for voltage regulators I found this one which already had the potentiometer on. And you even get a small uh, knob to it. So this is the small uh, voltage regulator. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for this one as well. Uh, and so I have a few more because I'm going to add these kinds of strips in other places. And I, it, it doesn't dim the LEDs the whole way so it's around half the the travel of the potentiometer uh, dims the lights but it's still very good for dimming lights and also I forgot the the reason that LED perks no DIY perks and the reason I also do it is that when using voltage regulators uh, for videos for example you don't get that flickering that you can get when you use a PWM or, or pulse width modulation dimming, which is the normal cheap variant for uh, dimming LEDs and uh, used in Arduinos for RGB LEDs, which I hope we'll get into soon. Uh, that will uh, depending on the camera and depending on the frequency of the pulse width, uh, the modulated uh, the waveform, uh, it, it will create a flickering light on the video. This one won't, no matter how dim you have them, they will just be that dim as they are. So, that is it. This is my computer workspace um, which takes up very little space has a lot of CPU power and uh, now finally also looks very beautiful because of uh, lacquering the table which really brought out the the patterns of the wood so uh, I hope you like this uh, if you do press the thumbs up like button 
and also subscribe to my channel and uh, follow my work on making this studio slash workshop slash man cave and uh, while I tinker with Arduino and other stuff. So until next time, take care, bye.